Welcome back to the GCN Racing News Show. I almost don't know where to start on this week's show because I'm still stunned, as I think most cycling fans are, the incredible upset that we all witnessed at the Tour de France on Saturday. Talk about a plot twist. Uh, Tali Pogacar becomes the youngest rider in 116 years to win the race and in quite some style. I'll also be taking a look back at the Giro Rosa, the Tour de Luxembourg and the one-day Italian classics. <laughs> By the morning of the time trial to La Planche de Belfi on Saturday, most headlines had already been written, many articles drafted and almost ready to file to be printed or uploaded on Sunday night. The race had been following the script. Jumbo Visma, the strongest team, the dominant force, Primoz Roglic, the man who would finish off all that hard work, bringing the yellow jersey through to Paris. The problem for them was that one man appeared not to have read the script, or if he had, he decided to just rip it up and throw it in the bin. Tali Pogacar's performance in the Stage 20 time trial was one of the most stunning upsets in our sports history. Things had been absolutely perfect for Jumbo Visma and Roglic up to that point. They hadn't set a foot wrong for three weeks, and as a team, they had a vice-like grip on the race, a grip as tight as any previous Team Sky performance. Sure, uh, Roglic would have loved to have exerted his dominance by winning the Queen stage up to the Col de la Luz in Meribel, but in distancing his compatriot and closest rival Tali Pogacar by 15 seconds, he'd given himself that extra buffer he so clearly wanted going into the final stages. By that point, it was almost a done deal. Even the Jumbo Visma team manager Richard Kluger thought so. Yeah, I said 90. To 95 percent so uh <laughs> but yeah yeah obviously we we are in the lead we have almost one minute ahead uh we have it we have the yellow jersey already a couple of uh days almost two weeks and um our team showed that that we are uh yeah all together as a team we are uh, one of the strongest so yeah, we we can be really confident um that it will pan out as we we planned it in the beginning Nobody could have predicted what would happen just three days later. I mean, I had mates messaging me asking if I thought anything major would happen in that time trial, but I wrote back and said, unfortunately, as much as I'd love to see the drama and excitement, I didn't think we'd see any major upsets or changes. How wrong could I have been? Uh, Tali Pogacar pulling out a quite incredible performance at the only individual time trial of the race to not only win the stage, to not only claw back that 57 second deficit, but also to put another 59 seconds into Roglic on top of that. And if we're all still trying to come to terms with what on earth happened on Saturday, can you imagine how Primoz Roglic and his Jumbo Visma team are feeling right now? I mean, the television images of Tom de Moulin and Wout van Aert looking on in astonishment were almost haunting to watch, weren't they? Uh, three weeks of hard work and three weeks of sacrifice, all for one common goal. A goal that was snatched away at the last possible moment. How many more stages could Van Aert have won, for example? Could he have won the green jersey? Probably. Uh, could Sepp Kuss have won a stage along the way? Quite possibly. However, I do hope that none of them regret a single thing about the way they rode for that three weeks. They were the epitome of strength and the epitome of professionalism. For Roglic though, I think this is going to be a bitter pill to swallow and a moment that is going to leave a sour taste in his mouth for months or perhaps even years to come. Now I'm sure he must be going through all sorts of emotions right now, maybe guilt for not delivering on his team's hard work. He might be feeling ashamed or perhaps even slightly embarrassed but I sincerely hope that he gets over this sooner rather than later. Roglic rode like a true champion for three weeks. He was measured, he was assured, he rode intelligently, and sure, he wasn't quite where he should have been on that final time trial, but he finished fifth on the stage. He was just 45 seconds behind former world time trial champion Tom de Moulin. He averaged six watts per kilo up that final climb of La Planche de Belfi. So as far from a poor performance, it is just that Pogaccia set a new standard and one that could be very hard for anyone else to reach in the coming years. That was the biggest margin of victory in an individual time trial since Tony Martin back in his heyday in 2014. Now what has been more impressive is the way that Roglic has dealt with defeat. He's been gracious, uh, but also very human with it, I think. Uh, ironically, the way he dealt with the shock will have made many people warm to him far more than they had whilst he was in the yellow jersey. He really acted like a true champion, I thought. 
Also the way he embraced Pogaccia straight after that stage 21 and the way they were with each other on the opening part of the final stage, that was just fantastic to see. Uh, now, whilst you could say that the final result was unexpected and that would be an understatement, some people, rather astonishingly, did predict it. Uh, right, well, I am going to go uh, also away from the two main favourites. Yeah. I'm going to pick Tade Pugaccia. After the Queen stage that you would have seen by the time you watched this world of cycling, it's going to be the other way around. And that is how it's going to remain right to the end of this year's Tour de France. Uh, you heard it here first. I am going to drop the mic and retire, I think. Uh, unfortunately for you, I'm only joking, but I will certainly bask in Pugaccia's glory for a few years to come yet. And I'm fairly confident in predicting that he is going to have a fair amount of success in the coming years. I'm going out on a limb there, obviously. Uh, so last year, he hit the cycling headlines by winning three stages of the Vuelta a España and finishing third overall and best young rider. This year, he's become a global star. Not only has he won the yellow jersey, he's also won the polka dot jersey. The white jersey is best young rider. The only other rider ever to have won three jerseys at the same Tour de France is Eddie Merckx, who achieved that feat back in 1969. He is also the youngest rider to win the race since Henri Cornet 114 years ago and the first Tour debutant to win the race since Laurent Fignon in 1983. The magnitude of his win and his performance should not be underestimated. And what we've got to love most is that the guy was 21. Uh, he's 22 today, so happy birthday, Tade. But not once did he settle for second place at the Tour de France. Not once was he defensive. He rode every single stage of this Tour de France to win the overall. And that, on its own, speaks volumes of the guy. And of his team, in fact, UAE Team Emirates. Now, they faced quite a lot of criticism over the last few weeks for not being strong enough to back up Pugaccia's ambition, but I'd actually like to give them some praise. Uh, they lost Davide Formolo due to a crash, Aru due to... Well, we don't really know why, uh, but everyone that was left in that race performed brilliantly for that team, I thought. Uh, David de la Cruz, who crashed very hard on day one, was a fantastic support to him in the final week. So too were Jan Polanche and Marco Mercato. But the standout rider for me on that team, actually, was Vigard Starker lengen the big Norwegian was there with Pogaccia deep into many of the mountain stages and was certainly present for far longer than I expected him to be. And then you've got Alexander Kristoff too, he did what he could. Uh, let's not forget they bookended this race actually with yellow jerseys, after all he won on stage one. I was also particularly pleased for Alan Piper. Uh, he is a man who loves this sport and who's been in it for 40 years and who recently returned to his passion after a second successful battle with cancer. Yo, I'm so proud of you. We need the stage. Brilliant stuff. Uh, now, with such an extraordinary stage on Saturday, it is very easy to forget or gloss over some of the other incredible performances over the last week. So first up, congratulations Richie Port. Uh, this is his 15th Grand Tour, but he's never ever finished on the podium of one until now. Uh, and this was the interview that he gave to us after his brilliant performance on Saturday's time trial. It's been a, a funny old race for me through the years. You know, I've had so many disasters. I almost had a couple here, but you know, the, the team's been incredible. Um, it's been a, a great three weeks. You know, I came here um, with my wife's blessing. I missed the birth of our second child. So to come away with a podium, it's just, you know, absolutely incredible. You know, to have, I'll have that photo on my wall when I retire. Uh, on the on the shots with, with two other massive champions, so you know I'm I'm just absolutely humbled. It's not really sunk in yet. I loved that interview. Uh, Rich has endured a lot of criticism and experienced a lot of bad luck over the years, uh, but this performance at the age of 35 is exactly the reward he deserves after years of hard work. Much of it in the service of other riders. Chapeau, Mr. Port. Uh, he himself has stated that it could well be his last crack at a Grand Tour as a team leader. Uh, he's rumoured to be heading back to Ineos Grenadiers next year. And speaking of that team and working for others, it was also great to see Michal Kwiatkowski take his first ever Grand Tour stage win. Hard to believe, actually, in many ways, given his pedigree as a rider, uh, but he's consistently sacrificed his own ambitions for those of the team over the last few years. And kudos too to Ineos Grenadiers because they had just a few days to reset their ambitions and they went all out to try and get something out of the race. 
Nobody tried harder to get that stage win for them than Richard Carapaz, uh, who actually gifted that stage to Quiato, presumably partly because he'd got himself the polka dot jersey, although that obviously didn't quite work out for him in the end. Another unsung hero in the last week was the Belgian Jens de Boucheret of B&B Hotels. Uh, so on the Queen stage, he dropped back to help his struggling teammate Brian Cocar reach the finish line inside the time limit. And he put so much energy into that that he missed the time cut himself and was eliminated from the race. That, ladies and gentlemen, is teamwork in cycling at its very finest. Special mention too to young Leonard Kamner and Soren Krau Anderson for their impressive stage wins and also to Miguel Angel Lopez, Superman himself. Uh, he pulled out an incredible performance to win the hardest stage of this year's race. And last, but certainly not least, Sam Bennett. What a fight he put up to retain that green jersey through to Paris and what a way to finish the job off. A second stage win and a convincing margin of victory in the points competition. Uh, Peter Sagan and Bora Hansgrohe threw everything they had at taking it back, but Bennett and his team were more than up to the task, and if anything, he found his best legs in the last week of the race. So he becomes the first Irishman to win the green jersey since Sean Kelly 31 years ago, and the first rider to win on the Champs-Élysées in green since Mark Cavendish in 2011. Uh, this was Sean Kelly's reaction to his win on the Breakaway Show. Well, you know, it's, it's an amazing feeling and uh, I think you're more nervous in that final than you are when you're out there. And I talked about that on the live broadcast, you know, family, cl you know, close, uh, close friends of, of you when you're out there. They're so nervous and I was really nervous. Uh, my glasses were steaming up in the end <laughs> in the commentary box because, you know, you just get so much into it. When you're in there, you concentrate on what's happening, but you see Bennett after the finish, you know, with his, with his team, staff and all of that, you know, just the emotions again. Amazing. Pleased as punch, Sean Kelly was. Uh, now, during this tour, I have started to feel quite old, and that might be because I am, uh, but also might be down to the fact that almost every successful rider is so blooming young. Uh, the average age of all the stage winners was just over 26 and a half years old, which is the youngest since 1985, and in my view, a very good thing for the sport. And just before we finish with the Tour de France for this year, well done, Ernesto Colnago. Now, believe it or not, nobody has ever won the Tour de France on a Colnago branded bike. Uh, Eddie Merckx used one, but it was branded as an Eddie Merckx bike. Now, Colnago are one of, if not the most iconic brand in cycling. As are Campagnolo, in fact, who took their first win at the race since Vincenzo Nibali in 2014. And Pugaccia did it on rim brakes too, which I know a lot of you are very pleased about. Right then, let's move on now to the Giro Rosa, which also had a bit of a plot twist towards the end. Uh, Annemiek van Vleuten, the world champion, had been looking good to defend her crown until this happened on stage seven. Nuvia Doma is there, Lotta Capecchi a little bit further. Oh, big crash! Voss is down, there's a big crash inside, and it's the Malia Rosa. Annemiek van Vleuten's gone down here. Somewhat incredibly, Van Vleuten managed to pick herself up and ride to the finish with what turned out to be a fractured left wrist, hard as nails. Uh, she withdrew from the race before the following day's stage and has since been operated on at home. Uh, it did cast doubt, of course, over her participation at the World Championships this week in Imola. But when she spoke to the media on Saturday, she said there was still a small chance she'd be able to ride the road race with a cast on. I'll wait and see on that one, but what we do know is that she won't be doing the time trial and will be replaced by Ellen van Dijk. Also involved in that very same crash was Van Flirten's trade teammate Amanda Spratt of Australia. She also withdrew from the race, but tests revealed no broken bones. However, her participation on Saturday at the World is now also in doubt, which is a big blow for her as she's finished on the podium of that race for the last two years. Mariana Voss of CCC Live also hit the deck hard in that crash, but only suffered skin loss, and so she did go on to complete the race. Uh, she took three stage wins in total, taking her tally up to a whopping 27 stage wins at the Giro Rosa, which is just over a third of all the stages she started in that race. Bonkers. Now, the lead of the race, almost by default, went to Cassia Nuvia Doma after Van Fleurten withdrew. Anna van der Breggen went on the offensive on the penultimate stage, finishing second there behind Elisa Longa Borghini and taking the pink jersey for herself. Uh, she then kept that through the final stage, which was won by Evita Muzik of FDJ Nouvelle Atlantique. 
Second and third on GC went to Nuvia Doma and Longo Borghini respectively, but we should give a special mention to 22-year-old Michaela Harvey of a Keep Paula car. Uh, the New Zealander rode incredibly consistency over the nine stages to take home fifth place on GC. Uh, also, congratulations to Lizzie Banks and to Lotto Capecchi, uh, both of whom took impressive stage wins along the way. Also in Italy, we had three one-day classics last week. First up, the Giro della Toscana. Uh, that was one in a sprint by Fernando Gaviria. One day later, we had the Coppa Sabatini, which marked the first pro win for 27-year-old New Zealander Dion Smith of Mitreton Scott. And then lastly, on Saturday, the Giro del Apennino, uh, which was also the first pro win for Ethan Hayter, the young Brit who rides for Ineos Grenadiers. Also on last week was the Tour de Luxembourg, which unfortunately was hitting the headlines for the wrong reasons. Uh, rider safety had been called into question on the opening stage with multiple parked cars and even a bus on the route near the end of that stage. Uh, so the riders decided to take matters into their own hands on the following stage two, neutralising that until 40 kilometres to go. And unfortunately, there were more issues later on with a truck getting onto the course on the final stage of the race. Now, thankfully, nobody crashed into it, but its sudden emergence did have a knock-on effect further down the bunch and caused a crash there. Uh, the UCI have said that they will investigate the incident. In terms of the racing itself in Luxembourg, it was the Italian Diego Ulissi who came back with the most to celebrate. He took two stage wins and the general classification, so a good week for UAE Team Emirates. Uh, the other stages there were won by Arno de Mar and John Dagenkolb, and the final one by Andreas Kron, uh, the 22-year-old Dane taking his first pro win on the final day of the race. Now, with the revised road season now in full swing, it seems slightly strange to be talking about cyclocross. But we need to, because this season starts this coming weekend. Uh, we'll have a pretty packed season of live coverage, in fact, over on our race pass. That includes the Super Prestige, Ethius Cross, Trophée Veldreden and the European Championships. And they're all available in all race pass territories except for Belgium. So if you're not already signed up, what are you waiting for? Head over to the GSIN app and you can sign up right now. It will be the familiar voices and faces of Jeremy Powers and Marty McDonald who will be bringing you commentary and analysis for the majority of the races, uh, all of which will be available on demand if you're unable to watch live. As I said, it all kicks off this weekend, Saturday the 26th of September, with the Ethius Rapen Cross. Right, we shall wrap things up with the latest transfer news. Uh, first up, Alessandro DeMarchi is the latest rider to move on from Team CCC. Next year, he'll be further strengthening the Israel Startup Nation roster. That team have been very active in the transfer market, haven't they? Amon Grindal Janssen, the former Norwegian national champion who has been riding at the service of Primoz Roglic at the Tour, he will move from Jumbo Visma to Mitchelton Scott next year. OK, that is all for today and the racing news show for this week. But I will be back tomorrow with Ollie Bridgewood for our big GCN preview of the UCI World Road Championships, which start on Thursday in Imola down in Italy. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.